Dr. Prabhakar, let me begin by asking you, uh, you just about to launch a book uh, which primarily looks into the issue of Telangana and why you think uh, Telangana should not be as a, a separate state. Uh, could you tell us on a sort of general perspective, what are your uh, basic arguments against uh, this uh, agitation that has been going on for a few years now? You see, uh, in 1956, we have formed Andhra Pradesh state. All the Telugu speaking regions and all the Telugus till then were in different political dispensations. They were under, you know, British, they were under, uh, uh, the, some of them were under, under Mysore state and some of them were under the Naisa. In 56 we formed a state and that formation was a result of decades of struggle. Now today, somebody wants to divide the state. In fact, it is they who have to advance their reasons and arguments why a state which is formed in 1956 as a result of decades of struggle for unity. Now, they, they have advanced certain arguments. And what we feel is that those arguments are completely unsupported by data, economic data. They're unsupported by history. They're unsupported by the political developments or electoral outcomes. They're completely unsupported by, you know, the kind of linguistic and cultural framework that the Telugu people have. But they have been, you know, in some kind of a circulation. People like you in Delhi and many media persons and even, you know, leaders of other political parties who are not really in touch with what is happening there of history, they, pro they feel probably they have a point. That is the reason what, why we have, what we have done is we have brought together all the kind of claims, their assertions and their allegations and their reasons for dividing the state. We have brought them together. And we have refuted them, each one of them. We have collected 101 lies and dubious arguments of Telangana separatists. And we have collapsed them into four categories. Mm. One is the historic, historical, mm. the second one is economic, the third one is political, the fourth one is language and culture. Mm. In, under these four categories, we have listed all their claims and assertions and allegations and refuted them one by one with economic data, historical facts, political developments, electoral outcomes, statistics and the cultural and language history of Telugu people. Let's begin uh, with the issue of economics. I mean, that perhaps been the strongest one so far, uh, suggesting that the Telugu, uh, Telangana, people from the Telangana region have been backward and they've always been sort of suppressed. Uh, uh, what has been your uh, refute uh, on this issue? You see, they've been saying that Telangana is underdeveloped. It's backward. It's exploited. It's neglected. This is what they have been saying. Now, this has gained a lot of publicity. Now, what, what happens is, when I come to you repeatedly and say, look, you know, that guy is beating me up, that guy is exploiting me, that guy is not paying, etc. If you do not verify, you tend to have some kind of a sympathy towards me. Now, these Telangana separatists and these agitationists, they have been doing, you know, we are exploited, we are underdeveloped, etc. But then, you examine the data carefully. That's what we have done in this. Mm. We have not approached this with a prejudice. You know, we might have our idea that, you know, the state should not be divided. That's a different thing altogether. Mm. But if you say that, you know, Telangana region is underdeveloped or neglected, we just wanted to see what are the indices. Education, irrigation, per capita income, jobs, roads, agricultural productivity, hospitals, beds, schools, colleges. In every way, in every sector, all the Telangana districts are as prosperous as the rest of Andhra Pradesh is. There is absolutely no evidence to show 
that Telangana region is neglected or exploited or backward, you know, they had less um, allocation of resources? Absolutely not. I've shown you in, 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 in great detail. And interestingly, Kunal, when this data is brought out by us, they have absolutely no answer. Subsequent to what we have done, even the Sri Krishna committee also had shown that among the three regions, if there is any backwardness, it is in Rayal Sima, not in Telangana. So they have also, because you see, our sources of uh, the data are Planning Commission, CSO, Central Statistics Organization, Andhra Pradesh Director of Economics and Statistics, NCAER, you know, NSS rounds, all this, it's, it's, it's common. So they have also relied on the same data and they have also come up with the same kind of a finding that we had done. Now interestingly, the Telangana agitationists no longer talk about backwardness, no longer talk about, uh, you know, exploitation. They say, ah, yes, yes, the data is there, all right, all right. Now they say, we want self-rule. I'll come to that. Hmm. Now they say that, you know, uh, people want it. No, we are contesting even these two. If they say self-rule, well, in our parliamentary, multi-party democracy based on universal adult franchise, I elect and you elect your ward member, your sarpanch, your mandal president, your bark president, your zilla parishad president, your MLA, your MP, everybody. Mm. Now, what is self-rule under this? Mm. You're not you're not ruled by you know, somebody who is coming from a different state or a different country or a different continent. We are on the basis. If you reject this model, that's a different thing. Mm. For instance, Naxals do that. Mm. Naxals say this is sham. Mm. I'm not going to argue with them. But if we are in this constitutional democracy, if you say that, you know, Manmohan Singh is our Prime Minister, he belongs to Punjab, he's a Sikh, and therefore I don't have self food. Do you agree with that? We cannot agree with that in, in, under our dispensation. So if they talk about not anymore the economic criteria, but self rule, my question to them is, do you think that you are not electing your own representatives? your own sarpanches, your own Zilla Pashid presidents. So that is one. They talk about culture or language. Mm. Now you see, ours is a very diverse kind of a country. Mm. Culture is not dichotomous yeah. amongst Telugu people, but mm. it is diverse in the sense uh, North Coastal Andhra Pradesh has a different sort of a festival from the South Coastal, from Rail Sima, from North Telangana, from South Telangana. So it is diversity rather than dichotomy. Now, for instance, you know, the way you cook your food and I cook my food in my region is different, but that's no reason to divide a state. Now, in our society, each caste has its own way of cooking. Each caste has its own preferences for you know a particular way of dressing a particular mm. way of talking mm. a particular way of accent mm. so this is the kind of diversity we cannot show this as a dichotomy mm. as a contradiction mm. and say that you know we, we, we have nothing to do with you mm. for some time they have also started uh, you know uh, a, a kind of a claim that telugus from andhra and rail sima region and telugus in under the Nizam in Telangana have nothing in common. That's also false. Historically, it is, it is, it is incorrect in the sense, only in 1850 onwards, the Nizam started ceding territories of coastal and Rail Sima districts to the French and the British in lieu of certain payments that he was not able to make in cash. So from 1850 onwards to 1956, just about 100, 110 years, or maximum of 150 years, we were under different political dispensations. Before that, we were together. From 1956, we are together. In the 2500, roughly 2500 years of known history of the Telugu people, in for 2350 years, we are together. So there is absolutely no case for dividing the state. 
Let's talk about the Telangana movement. It's interesting uh, to see that how the movement actually started quite a while back, almost before independence, some would say. Uh, you, in your book, you do point out the link between the Communist Party from both the regions. And even the, the, the song, particular song, uh, which uh, speaks about warriors from uh, Telugu warriors and Telangana people, something like that. So, uh, tell me, almost what, 65, 70 years the agitation has been on. Why hasn't it been able to, uh, you know, sort of meet its end goal? I mean, we do see before independence, then in 60s, again there was an agitation, if I'm not wrong, and again recently. Again, now it seems to have fizzled out to an extent. If it was a mass movement, it should have gone uh, to an extent. What is wrong with this movement, do you think, uh, you know, from a critical point of view? Well, there are two things. Actually, uh, most people, you know, uh, it's commonplace that they get confused. The Telangana movement that you're talking about, that was an anti-Nizam movement. Okay. It was an armed struggle led by the Communist Party of India. It was an armed movement, armed peasant movement. It has nothing to do with the separated Telangana, no. Okay. This is a statehood agitation that was a communist revolt against the feudal and Nizam despotic rule. Okay. That's a different thing. Altogether it is a different thing. Hmm. Now this one, the first ever time there was a demand for a division of the state from Telangana was in 1969. 13 years after the state formation. 56 the state was yeah. formed. 69 there was an agitation. Mrs. Gandhi was the Prime Minister. She said nothing to Even be... the formation of Andhra Pradesh itself is a story. Yes, yeah. it was a story. In fact, there was a, I mean, it's a story in the sense like in every, every other uh, state formation was a story. But it was also the, a very violent one. I mean, no, no, it was... had to die. For no, no, that was... Ah. Uh, that, that was... That was when Telugu's wanted a separate state to come away from the Madras presidency. Yes. That was yeah. the thing. Because you see, that time the Congress High Command, because the Congress High Command was everything those mm -hmm. days, they were not very sure of how to organize the post independent state reorganization. State reorganization. There was a strong demand that it should be done on the linguistic basis. Mm. But Nehruji and other people were not very sure. They were not convinced yet mm. that time. Mm. But ultimately that was the... Now if you look at say from Bengal in the east down you know to the entire uh, Bay of Bengal coast mm. and then up on the Arabian Sea up to Punjab, Haryana, Himachal, Rajasthan, everything. All these are linguistic right. states. Mm. Now, first agitation was 13 years after the state formation mm. about the jobs and, and you know that fizzled out because mm. you know it, it could not generate the overwhelming public support for it mm. because the overwhelming public support is for unity they, they all mm. Telugu people want to stay together mm. there could be grievances mm. they, they put forward those grievances but they do not merit division of the state mm. now there's another uh, you know confusion every time people think that it is only Telangana people who are demanding or a demand for separation comes only from Telangana mm. that's not true okay. In 72, there was a huge agitation in Andhra and Rail Sima regions for a separate state. Okay. Much more violent. In fact, the government had to be dismissed. Assembly was kept under suspended animation, and president rule had to be imposed to 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 you know to stop that movement, mm. to stop the agitation. From 1972 onwards, Kunal, 30 years till 2002, there was absolutely no issue. It is just because a few politicians have become unemployed, they started raising these little, little things. And even today I say that the movement, the so-called movement, I call it agitation, I prefer to call it agitation rather than a movement, has no public support. You look at the 2004 electoral outcome. The TRS, which is you know the platform yes. for uh, separate Telangana demand, they contested 54 seats in alliance with Congress. They could win only 26. Mm. And even those 26 Kunal, I must tell you, they could win only when their candidates were directly pitched against the TDP candidates. Because it was the anti-incumbency wave that was, you know, sweeping mm. Andhra Pradesh there. Mm. When the TRS candidate was in direct contest with CPI, they lost. 
when it was in direct contest with CPM, they lost. Even when they were in direct contest with Congress rebel, also TRS has lost. That's one thing that you must understand. Secondly, in 2008, the TRS MLAs have resigned on the base, on you know, to demand the separate uh, state. 16 MLAs have resigned. They could win only seven back. Okay, there, there was no uh, massive support for them. Then came 2009 elections. 2009 elections, TRS contested in their alliance with TDP this time. They contested 40, they won only 10. And I tell you, the, the leader of TRS, he himself just scraped through with 15,000 in Mahbub Nagar parliamentary constituency. Parliament constituency, 15,000 is nothing. And then his son, another leader, he won his assembly seat with 150 votes. Just scraped through. I mean, you, 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 as they say, you know, by the skin of their teeth. So it has no convincing mandate from the people. It is only during the last, you know, a few by-elections when the emotions were very highly charged, they could win with good margins. But mean then in June 2012, there was a by-election in Parakala, my surname, but that happens to be a constituency. Uh, they they contested a by-election. They won only by 1,500 votes. Very unconvincing. Hmm. So, if they say that it is, it is a huge movement with a lot of public support and a lot of public endorsement, sentiment, it's just hollow talk. One last question. Uh, a lot of talks about the centre taking a decision on this issue uh, end of this month. Uh, what do you expect? You see, and both the main and may I add, both the main parties, Congress yeah. and BJP, seems to support. Uh, smaller states. No, no, no. You see, what is smaller state? If you have a state of this much, this is smaller. And if it is this state, this much, then it, this is smaller. Now, if you tell me that no state should have, say, more than three crore population, hmm. you know, you, hmm. you need to have a framework. Hmm. You, you, you cannot Arbitrary. divide us. Yeah, you cannot say, you know, that that guy is on a fake fast, they, they, they burnt about three buses and they stopped trains, they called for a bunk. This cannot Stoning be the basis. This be a favorite thing in Hyderabad. They, they, I, uh, yeah, they, they, they cannot be the basis for redrawing the political map of India. Now, you see, uh, what is our essential defining architecture of Indian Republic? essential defining architectural principle of Indian Republic is the linguistic state. Now, if you are departing from that, let's all put together our minds and see what should be the shape of India. Should, do we have states on the basis of size, do, geographical size? Do you have states on the basis of the size of population? Or do you have states on the basis of, you know, religion? You know, each religion has a state or each caste has a state. What is the, what is it? We, we strongly believe that there is no reason to jettison the linguistic basis. So, if, if, if the center, if the center tries to do, disturb the linguistic arrangement, the center, I tell you, Kunal, will become a laughing stock. Is it also going to be opening a Pandora's box? It is going to be because you see. And then you have Bidharva and. There are, there are, you see, there are, at least to my count, there are 25 such demands. You know, some are latent, some are incipient, some are in their infancy, some are in their advanced stage, like Gokhaland, Vidarbha, Kodagunadu, Hyderabad, Karnataka, then Telangana, then Harit Pradesh, you know, then Kutch and Saurashtra. You know, then, then there, there are uh, south, south and southern Tamil Nadu. Even the small states in northeast want in the, in the, the, the smaller states. Exactly. So, but you see, are we in a position now to see that the entire Indian political and emotional energy is consumed by consumed by you know which which district should be in which uh, which which state and how big should be this state and how small should be that state or should we think about you know how do we achieve eight percent growth nine percent growth ten percent growth how do we compete with China and what is our relation with say EU and things like that should what what should, what should our energies be spent on now 
So it is going to be very, very dangerous. I think if the, if the union government doesn't understand this, doesn't understand what is the basis of Indian polity, it is going to do a lot of damage to the country. I'm not worried about Andhra Pradesh. It, it will do a lot of damage to Telugu people everywhere. And if Telugu people are damaged, of course, you know, 8 crore people are damaged, means India is, is, is definitely damaged. By extension, as you said, it will open up a lot of other issues.